Hey, welcome back. In this video, I want to go over how hooking works in Theos and how we can write a simple tweak to override the method of an existing class inside of iOS. We usually start with what's known as the Objective-C header file. It's a source code file that tells us what data the class might have and which methods are available to it. Typically, header files follow the same basic pattern, which makes larger classes like these much more manageable. Let's take a look at a specific header file called sblockscreenviewcontrollerbase.h. sblockscreenviewcontrollerbase is just one of an endless amount of classes available through iOS or third-party apps on the App Store. The classes available to iOS can be found through Google, but Limnios built a website with a header search bar, and I think it's a lot easier to use. At the top of the lock screen view controller base class, there are imports, which we typically don't need to worry about. We'll collapse them for now and label it imports. Then, an interface. The interface will define what data is available in the class. For example, is the lock screen still locked or has the user already unlocked the device? We won't need this either, but it will be useful for tweaks that need to know something about the class. The interface is marked with at interface, followed by the class name, a colon, and then the superclass. And lastly is the methods. This is a list of all of the method signatures that can be accessed. We're going to use view did load for this tweak, which is triggered after the lock screen view is created. This is the method our example will hook. When writing for Theos, we use a percent sign to talk to Theos. This syntax is called logos and is very easy to use. So to create our own tweak, we'll need to hook an existing Objective-C class. We tell Theos to hook the class by using percent hook followed by the class name. Next, we put the method we want to override on line 2. The percent %orig is an original tag that tells Theos to execute the code that was originally in view did load, followed by any code we want to execute. The original tag can be moved around, removed, and even stored in a variable, but for now, just note that the original tag runs the code that was there before we hooked it. And finally, outside of the method, on line 7, there's a percent end to tell Theos we're done hooking the class. If we add some visual feedback by using a red rectangle, this code can be ran on a device. Let's look at how to turn it into a working project. So if we want to turn the code from the animation before into a working project, we can use $theos slash bin slash nick.pl. If this doesn't work for you, it's probably because $Theos isn't persistent. If you followed my last video, I forgot to cover how to keep it in your Bash profile. The GitHub wiki for Theos does cover it. I apologize. Um, but moving on, the template we want to use is the iPhone tweak. So we type in 11. The project name is going to be Red Rectangle. This can be anything you want. The package name generally looks something like this. I keep mine lowercase, but you can do whatever you want. The author maintainer, um, in my case, I want to use the default, which is indicated by the brackets. I could have done the default here, but I needed to change it, so I overwrote it with my own. Um, but if I leave it blank, it will use Zane Helton. And the Bundle filter is something that's unique to each process. For Springboard, it's com.apple.springboard. For other apps, it follows the similar um, pattern, especially for Apple apps. But if you wanted to hook something like Snapchat, you would have to look it up or use some other tool to find the bundle ID. I'm going to use Springboard so I can just press enter. The list of applications to terminate. Again, uh, we're going to use Springboard but we need to restart the, whatever process we're tweaking. So if I hit enter, it'll restart Springboard um, whenever we install it. So if we cd into that directory and look at it, we can see all the files are created and we can open it inside of Visual Studio Code or whatever text editor we want. Cool. So there's a giant comment in there by default. Um, if you haven't read this yet, I highly recommend you read it. It's great information, but we don't need it, so we're going to delete it. In the animation, I talked about percent hook sb lock screen view controller base, which is a class available through iOS. For every hook, there's an end, so I'm going to go ahead and close it off, and we can type while we're in there. We want to override the view did load method 
which is available to us from the super class of SP lock screen view controller base. If I were to be explicit about this, I could write at interface SP lock screen view controller base colon UI view controller. And this is just telling the compiler that there's a class called SP lock screen view controller base that inherits from UI view controller. So that means that anything available through UI view controller is going to be available to SB lock screen view controller base. And view did load is available to UI view controller, so we can use it in this class as well. If we were to compile and install this tweak right now, whatever code was inside of view did load wouldn't run at all. But if we were to change that and add the percent orig tag, that would run the code that was there and written by Apple. But we want to add our own code, so we're going to go two lines down and write our own code. For this red rectangle project, we're going to create a UI view. If you're not familiar with UI Kit, it's a framework on iOS and it's really powerful, it's really big, um, and there are some controls. UI view is one of them. And we can create it by doing something similar to this. Oops. If we initialize it with a frame, we create a CG rect, and we want it to have the XY coordinates of 0, 0, and a width of 200 and a height of 200. By default, these UI views are clear, so we want to add a background color of red color. And finally, we can use self.view, add subview, red rectangle. Now, self.view is available um, to us because SP lock screen view controller base again inherits from UI view controller. And UI view controller has a UI view called view. And we can use add subview, red rectangle. So this is going to add our red rectangle to the lock screen view. If we save it and we go back to the terminal, we type make package install. And everything should compile fine. You need to have SSH set up for the installation part. I'll cover that in another video. Don't worry about it for now. So we have to kill springboard manually. That's what I'm doing right now. So I'm killing the process 600. And that's just going to respring my device. Once it respring's in the bottom left, you can see that the red rectangle shows up and it's 200 pixels wide and 100 or I'm sorry, 200 pixels tall. It's exactly what we wanted and it demonstrates the basic ideas of creating a tweak. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. One last thing before you go, you may have noticed the animation at the beginning of this video. It's something I haven't tried before, but I want to start taking this channel in a direction, and animation seems like a good place to start. Um, if you have any feedback, or if you think it should just be removed altogether, please let me know, and I'll try to incorporate that into future videos. Again, thanks for watching consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.